next up, we have uh, Brad Bush with Dilexa. Now, he grew up with uh, the first personal computer. So if you think about that, that's the age of floppy disk and big bulky computers. He's the chief operating officer for Dilexa. They're doing great things here in Dallas. Let's help welcome, to him, welcome him to the stage. So that's right, I got my first computer when I was in 1979, and um, since then, I've been thinking a ton about how computers and humans interact with each other. It's really interesting where we are. We're at a great juxtaposition of the past and the future, where in the past we had to use mouse, mice, and screens. Now there's a ton of ways. We have five things now that are taking over and forming a new paradigm. The first is that we have these ubiquitous computing and communication devices in our pockets. The second is that virtual reality and augmented reality are, are almost here. In the first quarter of next year, there's going to be all these systems released, and it's really going to affect how we interact, and we're going to be inside the computer. The third is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is in everything that we touch these days. It's in Google when you look up a Google search, when it tells you what's there. It's in Siri when you call, and it's in this really cool application that I want to talk a little bit about called x.ai. It takes meeting requests that you used to have to go back and forth with somebody, and you just copy Amy at x.ai, x .ai, and she actually like goes back and forth with all the people on your meeting and like schedule it all. So those are the kind of things that computers are going to be able to do. Here's another great one. This is the grid.io. The grid.io is a website where you just dump all your content and you dump your pictures and your, and your content and your graphics and everything else and it just colors them and moves them all around and you pick a template and it creates that for you. So the next thing that is leading to this new computer human in action um, is big data. So big data is actually getting rid of statistics. It's actually looking at all the data, getting the long tail on all of these interactions that we're dealing with. And the, finally, the, oh, this is a great, great example of that. This is me on Crystal Nose. So Crystal is a great program that will scour all the big data that you've written on the internet, everything that you've written, and it'll come back with your personality. Don't read that too carefully, um, because that is me. Um, and the final fifth one is application programming interfaces. This is, app, this is the way that programs are being built now. They're being built to connect easily to each other, so that now computers can expand into other programs. So it's much easier for programmers to build programs from these building blocks. So what does that create? It creates a environment that now people can write software for computers in two different ways. First of all, they can write it to be much more driven in a ecosystem that is much more connected. And it can be much more contextually aware such as the programs in the upper right, like the Amazon Echo, which we're going to talk about, and Slack, which is the um, top team building um, tool. So now, there's three ways that computers and humans are interacting. The first one is visual. This is the Netamo. So the Netamo is, it will actually see who's coming in the room. And so like if one of your family members comes in the room, it can actually text you. This is a really cool application from DARPA that they're actually picking all the pictures that they have of potential terrorist activities and they group them by if they see a car or if they see a particular person or a building and then a human can go into those groups and figure out who is actually um, maybe in those groups. This is, the, this is another way that a visual interaction is happening. This is Project Tango, which is the visual part of the driving car, the uh, self-driving car from Google. It can actually, on a tablet, see what is in the environment, so you can see that. So another way that computers and humans are now interacting that's not typing and keyboard and mice is through audio, and this is my favorite device because I have one of these at home. It's the Amazon Echo, and it actually lets you talk to it, say things like, what's the Ranger score? And it will give you the Ranger score. And this is another application using voice. This is um, Will Ryan Rob, a friend of mine, Live Ninja. They actually do, th through support, they actually listen to the person and get their emotions and then change. So the final way that computers and humans are interacting is through touch. This is a really interesting way that um, computers and humans are interacting through virtual reality. This is Oculus Rift. You can pick things up in virtual reality. You can throw them. And finally, there's one more way that computers and humans are interacting through touch. This is Project Solely by Google. You can actually use, that uses microsonar to actually, in products, be able to 
just reach up and move things with a virtual dial, basically. So what is this all leading to? It's all leading to what I call the invisible application, where now computers will, and computing power will disappear into the background. It will be much more like Star Trek, where we actually talk and the computer hears us, and it's much more emotionally connected to us. And it actually brings out the humanness in all of us, and we can look up from the screen and look into each other's eyes and be more human.